okay it's, it's time to put the skin on the skeleton and this is kind of tricky everybody complained that they had a, a really hard time uh, doing so uh, what I've done with the skeleton I put all the bot the aft clicos from the inside and I put it this way sitting on the table the exception of the, the top two I left them so I can brace against it but not too hard because I don't want to rip these holes out and what I'm gonna do and this is my first attempt and we'll see how that works I'm just gonna take the skin open it up and try to line it up as best I could this way and from the rear we can open it up and I try to try to install the clicos on both sides one at the time. Well, I thought really it would be more difficult than that, but it, it does look like this is the way to go, uh, to set it up, kind of spread it out and then put it and then put one at the time, uh, kind of somewhat of manhandling it, but have to be delicate at the same time because the skin receives the smaller rivet dash three. So I hope that would help somebody some more. I'll be right back. Now that we uh, have clicked the skin to the skeleton of the vertical stabilizer, uh, the manual in page 6-4 uh, calls for all the number 40 holes to be final drilled to number 40 and there is four holes in the front end of the skins here two on each side in the 705 and also the 706 that does not exist in the rib itself so we have to drill it to the number 40 also and that is what I'm going to do but I'm going to start with a smaller drill. I'll do the same thing for the other three and I'll be right back. And now it's time to uh, final drill all of the uh, holes in the skin to the number 40 um, and then again this is my preference um, if you're going to use a number 40 get a number 40 reamer uh, I elected to use a smaller reamer because uh, and I demonstrated that in a couple last video or the video before that 
how when you um, uh, dimple the holes, the holes open up quite a bit. So I elected to use a, a 095 reamer. Uh, give me a nice clean hole. And uh, this thing fits like a club. I mean, all the holes in, you know, they, they line up perfectly. So I don't suspect I'm going to have any problem. This is, this is a very nice, clean airplane. And um, uh, I, I am expecting things to go really smooth. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm sure you guys have seen a hundred videos uh, of people uh, final drilling. And you don't need to see me doing that. And uh, we'll move on to the next step. I got a couple of important things to mention today. And now, all we have to do is disassemble the skeleton and deeper all the parts and dimple them and prime them. Um, things to watch for is some leave open holes on the rear spar and the rear doubler uh, there is a list on Vans Air Force it's called the oops list which is um, just things that other people experience while they are building their own airplanes set to watch for in one of those things on page 6-4 uh, about the leave open holes do not dimple those or machine counter sink them. So this is what we have to watch for. I elected to uh, <coughs> start now with the ribs. I'm going to disassemble those, deburr them, and scuff them, then dimple them. Then we're going to leave uh, the priming uh, last thing before I rib it. Well, I... Uh Deburred all the parts, uh, the ribs, and uh, scuffed them. And it is time to dimple them. So before I dimpled them, I made the markings on the holes that's supposed to be left open on the 704 and the 705. There's one on each side of the 705, there's five on each side of the 704. So I'm going to change the camera, which makes a, a close shot to my uh, device here that I am going to be used for dimpling. Here we go. So let's uh, just check that with the rivet. Looks pretty fresh. Pretty nice dimple. And go ahead with the rest of it. Well, that was the 707, it dimpled all the holes, they look pretty good, we'll continue on. So now we're going to do the 705.
Okay, we're done with that. And then we have the last one, which is the 706. This one is a little bit tricky. Because it's very narrow over here. This one is even more tricky. This one is impossible over here. I have to do some doing to get this done. And then again, I have to come down slow. Okay. This is it for those, um, as far as dimpling is concerned, I have to dimple this one, so I need to get a little creative, we'll see about that, and I'll be right back. Well folks, I am not sure if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. I took the tool that I got from Cleveland Aircraft Tool. And I taped it in the back of the hole, and I'm gonna try and ease my tie. Well. find out to get a rivet set it in there and it looks pretty flush what do you guys think I think it worked well should try it on the other side See how that works. Think it work on okay. Just line up the hole. Good first. the whole oh. could spell a problem camera is not getting it maybe that's the answer actually I think I just found the answer which is, take this thing, stick it in there before I put the pressure, then make the shaft come up to it so I, it will ensure that it's engaged correctly. I think from now on this is what I'm going to do. All right, we're done with the uh, riveting the um, ribs now. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. We're done with the dimpling of the uh, ribs now. We'll move on to the next step. And uh, I think we're going to close this video at this point. Uh, because what's left 
for these ribs is to uh, be primed and will be ready to rivet on the skeleton. So um, starting the next video we're gonna try to dimple the skin. Now the skin is a bit of a hassle even with this machine here because um, the V-shape doesn't open enough so you can put it in here and it opens up so you can reach deep but we can reach all the way to the center of it where the straight line holes are and the deepest part then on the the top and the bottom we can do that with uh, with our rivet squeezer with the uh, regular yoke if we want to but uh, we'll explore that because I didn't I know that some people are out there in their garage by themselves and there's no one to hold I know if I have another hand to hold it the the the, metal, the, 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 the sheet metal flat I will have no problem doing most of it anyway but for those folks that are alone and uh, you can improvise you can put like a 2 by 4 to weigh it down a little bit so we'll see in the next video how that worked out uh, I'm glad the trick and, and for those of you who don't know um, the um, that tool that I used um, to uh, do that dimple is from Cleveland Aircraft. I can't believe I just lost. It. But anyhow, <laughs> thanks for watching our videos. And uh, please, if if you have friends that are building uh, experimental aircraft. Uh, you can tell them about our tooling and our videos. Uh, they might benefit from that. Thank you and see you in the next video.